Hey, how's it going? So, the question for me is, what's going to happen to NATO after it's clear that the Ukraine conflict has been lost? Uh, you know, because I tend to be a big picture guy. I like to like step back and sort of like look at the overall uh, scheme of things, how things are going generally. I'm not really good at the, the minutia, the military, you know, the day to day. It bores me, quite frankly. I'm much more interested in the overall direction of travel. And so at this time, when it's becoming increasingly clear that the conflict in Ukraine from the point of view of NATO is lost, what is going to become of this military alliance? Because you have to understand what NATO was originally, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It was a defensive pact to prevent the further expansion of the Soviet Union into Western Europe. That was the reason for being of the, of the NATO, of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Now, this served the Western Europeans fairly well through the Cold War. The Cold War ended, the Soviet Union collapsed, but since then, NATO has not had an actual reason for being. And this is the key issue. As a defensive alliance, it does not have a, a it doesn't have an existential threat. Now, does it? Because during the '90s, it was quite obvious the the Russian Federation was just not up to the task of invading Western Europe. Quite the contrary, they had so many huge problems of their own that they weren't going to bother with Western Europe. And so NATO didn't have a reason for being other than as a way to keep the Western European nations as vassal states of the United States. See? Because NATO allowed the Western European countries to devote very few resources to defense. Why would they spend resources on defense when the American defensive umbrella would be covering them. And so the Western European nations took advantage of this. I mean, NATO basically created the, made of the European nations, vassal states of the United States, but sort of like as, as, as in payment, if you will, the Americans took over the, the military burden and the European nations were able to devote enormous amount of their GDP to internal social welfare programs and making their lives all happy. See? That was basically the compromise between the Western European nations and the United States. We'll provide your defense and you can spend the, the, the money on building your economy and living happily in your social welfare uh, state, right? But so long as we have access to your markets, see? It, it was that kind of a relationship. Mm -hmm. A little bit like uh, like the gangster who goes to the mom and pop store and says, you know, you 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 will protect you, but you let us uh, do what we want. That was basically the deal. Mm -hmm. Now, during the '90s and the 2000s and into the 2010s, right, uh, this worked fairly well for the Europeans. Mm -hmm. But now, in this conflict with Ukraine. You know, it's, it's increasingly clear that NATO doesn't have what it takes to win a war. Because, make no mistake, this war is not the Kiev regime against Russia. This war is NATO against Russia. The fact that the, the revelations that have appeared, you know, from Angela Merkel, Francois Hollande, uh, you know, that the Minsk II agreements were just a way to buy time to arm Ukraine, you know, that, that, that makes it pretty clear. And the whole point of NATO, since at least the Munich speech that Putin gave in 2007, has been regime change in Russia and hopefully the breakup of Russia. Because what the United States has really wanted, or at least the political leadership in the United States has wanted, is to break up Russia into smaller bite-sized states like Ukraine. And due to those bite-sized states, what the West did to Ukraine, because Ukraine is a rich country. It has incredible human resources, not to mention natural resources and, and food supplies and all the rest of it. And yet Ukraine is one of the poorest countries in Europe, if not the poorest. Well, certainly now it's the poorest country in Europe. Why do you think that was? Because of the exploitation of the United States and Western Europe of Ukraine. 
And what the Russians wanted to prevent is exactly this exploitation of their country. They didn't want it broken up so that each of these smaller bite-sized countries could be exploited the way Ukraine has been exploited. I mean, underlying all of this conflict, that, that's the ultimate goal of the West. That's what they wanted to do to Russia, and they failed. And they carried out this war, and uh, what has happened? Well, the Russians have shown themselves more than equal to the task. And NATO threw everything they had at it, economic sanctions in particular. And what happened with those economic sanctions? They literally bounced off of Russia and boomeranged back at the Europeans, at the NATO states, and also secondarily to the United States. It's hurt them much more than Russia. And so NATO as a military alliance is proving itself to be kind of pointless because it can't win. And that's, that's the whole point to have a military alliance. Huh? And so the countries of Western Europe are starting to realize this. And so the American leadership class realizes that it's going to have to pivot and find a new enemy quickly. Because at this time, it's very apparent that NATO cannot take on Russia. The Ukraine situation was the absolutely best case in terms of taking on Russia. See, they had enormous Ukraine army, well equipped, with all kinds of fortifications and everything necessary to win. Win in the Donbass and potentially even have some incursions into Crimea and perhaps take Crimea because the West has always had a hard on for Crimea because Washington wants Crimea so it can own the Black Sea. But they failed. And so now that this failure is so obvious that you'd have to be a blind man not to see it, well, the Americans have to figure out a way to maintain this alliance because this alliance, when I talk about the NATO alliance, it's not an alliance. It's a vassalage. It's the system to maintain the Western European nations as vassal states to the global American empire. And so if the NATO pact, if the, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization starts to collapse internally, i.e. if different countries start waking up and saying to themselves, you know, the Germans, the French, the Brits, the Italians, the Portuguese, whomever, if they start waking up and saying, hey, how come we're in this alliance? This is proving no benefit to us and a whole lot of detriments to us. Why are we in it? Especially now, considering that the Russians view every NATO country as an enemy state and isn't going to be trading with us and isn't going to be helping us in different areas, food, energy resources, and, what the, rest of, and the rest of it. Why are we still in NATO? And so the Americans cannot allow that questioning of NATO. They have to maintain this alliance, which, as I said, is really a vassalage system. They have to maintain it. And so what better way to maintain it than to create a new enemy? I mean, think of it. NATO came to be because it was an alliance to protect Western Europe from the encroachment of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union is no more, but following Putin's 2007 speech, at least, NATO pivoted to have Russia as the enemy. That was the whole point, starting in at least 2007. One could argue since the late 90s, it doesn't really matter, that's really academic, but at this time it's very obvious that NATO is just an alliance aimed towards Russia, the common enemy, right? But the Russians have no imperial ambitions. They have no ambitions to take over Poland or Romania or Moldova or any other country, much less the Baltic states. They care about Russian people ethnic Russian people. That's why they're in Ukraine, because they wanted to end the killing, the, the ethnic genocide that was going to be happening to ethnic Russians in the Donbass region. So once this conflict is over, you know, there might be little, little skirmishes or little crises in the Baltics and Poland and Romania, you know, sort of like trying to create some sort of, you know, furtherance of this conflict between uh, NATO and Russia, but it's probably not going to work because the, the Russians have no interest in those countries. They just care about their own people. Right? And, and they have bigger fish to fry. They're prepared for a war with NATO, no question. Do they have imperial ambitions for NATO territory? No. It's very obvious. They, they don't care. They care about their own people. They've got bigger fish to fry. 
than to go out there and go to Poland or someplace else. And so there might be, at the end of this conflict in Ukraine, some little skirmishes, but they're not going to be, they're probably, I hope, they're not going to be flashpoints into some sort of real, you know, Ukraine 2 conflict, you know, say over Poland or the Baltics. Let's hope that that doesn't happen. But let's assume for the sake of argument that it doesn't happen. The United States, as a priority, will want to maintain this alliance because, as I said, it's a vassalage of Western Europe. And so how do you maintain a group of people together who have very different priorities and very different objectives? You create a common enemy. That's how NATO was held together after the end of the Cold War. Look, the Russians are the enemy. But now that Russia will have succeeded and Russia will be too big and strong to really have a second round, well, they're going to have to pivot in a different direction. And that's going to be China. See, a lot of people have been talking about the Americans going to war with China, and they were talking about it like, you know, in 2027, 2030. But all of a sudden, you know, American uh, military officers are talking about a conflict with China by 2025. And Jen Stoltenberg, the president of NATO, is saying that, you know, Russia and China are the same thing and that basically, you know, a conflict with Russia or a conflict with China, it's the same mission. See what they're doing there? See, the Americans are trying to pivot this alliance from Russia, which they can't defeat, which they are showing that they are unable to defeat. They're going to pivot it towards China. And it will be in the Americans' best interest to create a war with China as quickly as possible so as to maintain this vassalage system with Europe. Now, why do the Americans want to maintain this vassalage system with Europe? Why do they want to hold on to their European colonies? Ultimate irony of ironies, isn't it? Why do they want to maintain their European colonies? Very simple. You see, the European colonies, the European Union, represents a lot of money to a lot of different factions within the United States regime. The military-industrial complex, for instance, all those weapons that are being shipped, European weapons that are being shipped from Europe to Ukraine, it's emptying out the militaries of the European nations. And so the European nations, where are they buying their gear from, or they're going to buy their gear from? From the United States. The same with energy resources. The Americans blew up Nord Stream 2 and 1, and so the Europeans have to buy liquefied natural gas from the Americans. You see? You see how it works? And so, in order to maintain this vassalage system, in order to ensure that no country in NATO splits from the NATO alliance and tries to create a separate peace with the Russians and thereby have access to the resources of the Russians, well, the Americans are going to take this alliance and pivot it towards China and involve Europe in a war with China, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, for crying out loud. Mm. I mean, quite apart from the obvious geographic fact that, you know, they are literally on opposite ends of the earth. You know, Europe depends to a northern extent on cheap Chinese goods. The European economy, European prosperity, depended on the Americans shouldering the military burden so that they could devote resources to their social welfare programs, cheap Russian energy resources, and cheap finished goods from China. Now, they still depend on the military alliance with the Americans to provide them with defense, right? But that defense is creaking, as we can see. They lost the cheap energy from Russia, and now they want to kick out that third leg of their tripod and create an enmity with the Chinese, hmm? following the American lead. And the Americans have an interest in creating this conflict with China as quickly as possible. So it seems to me what's going to happen to the NATO alliance is the following. As the loss in Ukraine becomes undeniable, when it's just, it, it's just you, you can't deny it, and once it becomes increasingly clear that the Russians have no imperial ambitions for Western Europe, because they don't, 
then the Americans are going to rile up the Western European nations and turn them towards China, into a conflict with China. And that's why this talk by American military officers of a war with China by 2025, that's where it's coming from. The Americans realize that in order to maintain their empire, they have to keep their vassal states occupied with an external enemy. They can't allow their vassal states, their colonies in Europe, to realize that they are colonies. They can't allow that to happen. They have to keep them preoccupied with an external enemy. Whether it destroys them or not, and that's the tragedy. Europe, as a functioning continent, is going to be destroyed by the death throes of the global American empire as the GAE goes to war with China. This is inevitable. Understand what's going on. 